What the investment community likes is a way to triangulate. So for example, um, with the CGRP, um, there's now there's four assets there that I think uh, I think all four are commercial. I know the first three are. So uh, when the first company announces the what's happening with its new drug for migraine, that company gives a lot of disclosure on its earnings release or maybe at a medical meeting. And then the investors wait for the next one and then they can apply that knowledge. In the case of the digital strategies and the connectivity to the patients and the physicians and um, how you reach the reps and maybe why a sales force of 200 you know, is not practical. I do hear from CEOs um, that um, we have 200 reps and if we look at the physicians prescribing, there's no correlation between who the reps are seeing versus where the scripts are coming. So there's really a total disconnect. But right now, um, we need to come up with some effective metrics that would allow the investment community to judge how this new, you know, these new paradigms are having an effect. There is a big difference. And I do believe that smaller companies may be able to deliver that patient experience faster, which will eventually will have to be caught up by the, uh, by the larger organizations. But there is this dichotomy on if you want to meet the street numbers next quarter, you just have to put a lot more sales reps, show some more revenue, rather than thinking about longer term mission of about serving patients. Mm -hmm. So there is this difference which, which you can see very, very clearly. And if you do not have a way to think about that customer experience, that a doctor can access information or an MA can access information on demand, you will not be able to do that with the rep. Our reps can't yet figure out where to go. It's not there yet. So you got to have that. So I would definitely encourage you from an investor perspective, you need to look for metrics so that they have a way to commercialize it isn't just rep dependent because you've got too many weak points on it. One of the things we as private companies or sometimes smaller companies look to do is partner with a mid-size to a large size pharma company. And it's a question that we have to sort of balance. You know, do we want to go out and bring on that 450 person sales force, split our profits? Is it uh, good operationally? Is it good from a capital perspective? Capital usually likes that. Um, <laughs> but those are some of the considerations that we're, that I know we're going through right now, and I'm sure some of my colleagues are as well. And the flip side then is, what is that promotional mix really going to look like? And one of the things we've left out of our promotional mix almost from big pharma to where I am today is it's just patient education instead of real effective patient you know commercialization. There's only 10% of prescriptions that are written for branded product. So actually 90% of the interactions that are happening are happening off of a generic or ending with generic prescription. You also have commoditization of diagnosis, you have commoditization of fulfillment, and you have commoditization of payment. And all of those solutions will make a better patient experience. But frankly, as a small farm, small biotech company, or even as a large pharma company, I don't want to own any of that. I'm actually really excited that the cost of those transactions come down because they give me the opportunity to make a better customer experience. And I think the job of a pharma company, which is really to innovate around products that can lead to better outcomes for patients, then allows us to utilize all of that information, all of that innovation um, in the transactional side to actually generate better patient experiences with our product.